How's it going, everyone? This is Wimbo. Welcome back to another video podcast with Derek Elliott. From the last interview, we heard about Derek's 3D background, his art creation process, and we also briefly chat about Derek's 3D animation business. And we got a lot of good positive feedback in the comments and a few questions related to running a business as a freelance 3D artist. So as we promised, we are come back to the conversation. We're going to discuss some topics about marketing and the pricing from Derek. And this conversation is going to be very valuable for a lot of creatives who wants to become a full-time freelance 3D artist. So make sure you support this video with likes, comments, and subscribe. All right, without further ado, let's get it started. How are you, Derek? Welcome back. I'm, do I'm doing pretty good, Wemba. Good to, good to be back here chatting with you again. We've got some uh, exciting, exciting topics on the table today. Yes, yes. So in the last conversation, you said a really big part of getting clients is having as many people as possible and they know what you do and you do well and you're available to do it. So this is more like, I think it's marketing mindset to think about how to getting people. How do you approach your 3D or your marketing with your 3D work and uh, what kind of strategy are you found to be the most effective? Yeah, so, I, you know, I don't really have a, a specific you know marketing strategy that's written down or anything but um yeah it kind of leads leans back to that first point you made that i had said previously which is just that um you know my sort of goal is just to have people be aware of the work i'm doing um and also know that i'm available to do work and and mostly just by sharing examples of kind of how 3d can be utilized um, for a business so that they don't just see something that is 3D and think, wow, that looks cool. But instead they think, you know, wow, that looks cool and it could be valuable for my business. I think there are times a lot of, of, of like three animations or works has been made and being seen on uh, social media or on website. And I think a lot of creatives have been uh, challenging to to choosing the channel or choosing the, the places to, to really allow people to see what they do. And you have a, a massive, uh, you know, a social media following. How do you think about it, how to do this type of uh, marketing to getting started, to letting people to, to see your work? I know a lot of creative can do the job. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, I think the, the best thing to do is for one, just start, you know, not think too much about, you know, oh, I should be making educational content, you know, content marketing, I, I should just be posting on this website or that website. Um, but I, I think it's good to start off by spreading yourself a little bit thin, you know, just, you know, not go too deep on any one thing. Try posting different places, see what you enjoy. Um, you know, for me, I, I mostly started sharing my work on Instagram because I just, you know, I, I didn't feel like I needed too much interaction. Um, you know, I just, it was just kind of sharing little things here and there. So um, Instagram made the most sense for me. And then of course, over time I started, you know, becoming uh, active on other social platforms and actually, you know, one called Behance, which you've heard of is, is I was actually on that long before Instagram. Um, but I think just, you know, posting your work, seeing what kind of uh, interactions happen, you know, our clients reaching out to you on there and, and just kind of deciding what, what fits your personality, what fits your type of work, what are you enjoying, um, where are the good conversations happening, and then and then you can slowly start to dig a little bit deeper into into particular areas. So do you have a, a clients that directly reach you through these social media channels like Instagram or Behance? They, they will do this so? Yeah, definitely. Some of my first clients, actually my first ever clients were from Craigslist where I would, I would get on Craigslist and, you know, see who was looking for work and I would email them. So that was more of a direct outreach, but, um, but yeah, some of my first good clients, I would say were um, coming from Instagram. And I think that's one of the things that's powerful about Instagram in particular is that it does have a really good messaging system. So, you know, people would see my work and, you know, they'd be, you know, they'll, ask, do you do commissions or, you know, are you available? Um, and it's really easy to have a conversation there, which then you can take the email or something like that. But yeah, Instagram people definitely um, reach out for projects directly to me on my page there. Um, same thing with Behance. And then um, I think I've mentioned before that LinkedIn also is a really good 
platform nowadays for having those conversations. Mm, absolutely, that's great, man. For a lot of creatives, or especially beginners, it feels like it's a little bit bragging or showing off to、uh, for a lot of art- artists.、Uh, do you think what we can do to change this kind of mindset, or do you have any suggestion to kind of get over this type of thinking or feeling? Because it's kind of hard to post something and let people judge. Yeah, well, it's definitely. I mean, you you sort of have to disconnect,、um, you know, yourself from the work a little bit. You know, you, you might post something that you're not so proud of, but still shows, you know, your skills or just you know gets people to begin realizing, I'm、um, like, oh, that you do 3D work.、Um, but yeah, I, I feel the same way as I'm sure a lot of other people do, where you know, I don't, I don't want to be a, a braggy person or. Um, just by sharing something, I'm. I hope I'm not implying that I think it's the best thing in the world.、Um, but you will get critics who, when you post something, they might pick it apart or tell you what's wrong with it. But、um, you know, I think that the the general point of posting content and and sort of this marketing strategy in general is just to share. I think that、um, it, it's a really good feeling to just make something, even if you don't think it's the best in the world, and and put it out there. So. You know, if someone sees that ever as bragging, then you know I, I would say just ignore that person and、um, and keep sharing because it, it, especially when you're starting out, it is difficult to put your work out there and you know open yourself up to criticism. But that's really the best way to learn, best way to grow,、um, and, and ultimately can become a good marketing strategy for you. I absolutely agree with that, and I think one of my one of my very favorite quotes is talking about the best way to avoid. Criticism is to do nothing and be nothing. I think that's that's fantastic, right? Once you put your work out, you're gonna good to be judged and you be criticized. But if you decide not to having any negative feedback, just do nothing and be nothing. I think that's very, very powerful. What called I enjoyed it. I just like summarize what you said perfectly.、Um, so we we will have talk about the social media platform and、uh, and once we. Start knowing you more and a little bit through the social media. And the next thing we're going to do is click your website. We're gonna see your work on see your website. And I, I man, I gotta say you have a killer website. I went to there and see all these videos, everything, animations. So did you did all the design your work, or are you working with uh, other uh, designers to do this? So my website now is one that I built、uh, by myself in Webflow. Um, you know, there was a, a little, little bit of、um, not really. I, I guess sort of the way it's laid out was something I worked on a little bit with my、um, business coach, which was just you know what the web, what the purpose of the website is, and and that's kind of what really drove the design of it. Of course, I wanted it to look sort of good, but really, what was more interesting is that it would convert clients.、Um, but no, I mean, I, I think that you know it, it does its job. I'm. I'm not super in love with it. I don't think it's the most amazing website ever, but、um, but yeah, it, it's sort of just there to do a job, and and everyone should think about their portfolio or their website with that in mind, which is you know what what do you want someone to do when they go to that page? And in my case,、um, you know, I want someone to be interested in my work, realize I can do good quality work,、um, realize that they can hire me, and ultimately set up a call to have a conversation with me. Um, and that's why you know spotted throughout my website, there's a bunch of buttons that say "Talk to Derek," which allow people to set up a call with me. So, the website has a very particular purpose, and、um, and you know, as far as I know, it's a、uh, it's working because people set up calls, and、um, you know, I haven't、uh, I haven't felt the need to put too much extra effort into it, but it does feel a little bit like it could use a update sometime soon. No, I I disagree with what you just said. Where is the, your your website is not is just all right? I think it's fantastic, and、uh, and I see the all these easy calling for actions buttons or your icons to talk to you. I think it makes totally sense because you put yourself out as a personal brand. Like this is just talking to a Derek, easy, calm, very very direct. There's no bluffing about it, bragging about oh well, how good this animation we're gonna do, some cool and、uh, to capture the moment with stuff that 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 just way overrated. And then now the stuff you do put out there is is, is great.、Uh, I was surprised that all these things you done it with、uh, Webflow, and、uh, you have a way more tools or skills than we perceive to know you. So this is amazing, man. <laughs> yeah, well, what I mean, it's certainly not an expertise of mine, but. 
Um, I had previously set up a website with Squarespace, which is um, very easy for getting things set up, but um, felt e- either a little limited by it or there was just something in particular that I wanted to do. Um, I think it had something to do with background videos. I knew I wanted that looping um, video at the top, which I think that's something you can do in Squarespace now, but um, you know, Webflow was becoming very popular at the time and it just it seemed cool, um, seemed to sort of fit you know, my own interests with being able to tweak things, but, but still relatively easy to work with. So I'm, I'm by no means a, an expert in Webflow, but they, they have some really good videos online on, on how to use it. So, well, I think, uh, I think this is kind of one thing since we're talking about a different skill set that you're, you're, you already have, I feel like for a lot of creatives, especially for the young beginners, they think they have to find a niche they have to be specialized. But I feel like uh, there are times you don't have to be specifically just saying, well, I cannot do this. I should not do this. Let somebody do. At the beginning, you're probably just going to pick up all the tools available for you. Maybe you're not expert using that tool. But for your business, you have to oversee their things that you have done. Either outsource someone to do it, or if you can do it, do your own. It's not really a hustling mindset, but you have to be aware you are going to do something that is certainly not in your expertise. I, I do agree. And, and I think that even though maybe I would have a better website or I would have been able to spend more time working on what I am good at, um, you know, by hiring someone else, you know, that, that was definitely a route that I could take to, to build my website, but it's, it's still sort of fun. It's within the realm of something I think I can do. And, um, you know, it just kind of becomes a fun little break from other things. So you know, while from a business sense, that might not be the most efficient thing would be to you know, spend time learning web vote to build your own website. Um, you know, I kind of look at it less as, uh, you know, I need to get this done the best, fastest way possible. And, and, and it sort of just becomes an opportunity for me to learn a little bit of a new skill, tinker a little bit. Um, and in the end, get something that, you know, I'm, I'm proud that, that I was able to do by myself. Cause there's, there's a little bit of joy in, in that too, just knowing that. Um, that you did tackle something on your own. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, I don't know how you feel about this too much, but uh, I feel like the creatives are curiosity animals. Like we, we just want to know, oh, what is this? How to do this? This looks great. And I spent a lot of time to learning kind of branding. I even learning how to do logos or do the graphic design. I just feel like this is so cool. And I enjoy to learning a different uh aspect of the business and also trying to do something new. I think that is just like, small tiny treat for your your business and then since you're building this on your own and you actually have a more better understanding than just telling someone to do a website for you uh because you know oh that's how the feeling i want to go would do it's hard to describe to directly to someone that just first time working with you and to get something really 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 want so i think that that is just something that uh, i i agree with that it's just some try something uh, so since we're talking about the this kind of website and definitely the marketing strategy, usually people see your uh, social media, they start knowing you, they check your website, and then once you they decide to work with you, and would you mind to share about who is your ideal clients and uh, uh, how do you think you can track them for business besides the social media? Hmm. Uh, you know, I... I, I'm not sure. I feel like it's something I'm always defining. Um, it, you know, it's kind of hard to say what an ideal client is, but you kind of you kind of know it when you see it. Um, but you know, in in general, you know, someone who is a good communicator is clear about their intentions. Um, you know, someone that also respects the work you do, and um, you know, sometimes it can be difficult. For example, working with other people who are particularly creative because they may be you know, starting to creep into your territory a little bit um, in terms of, you know, decision making. Um, but yeah, you know, someone who knows what they want can communicate that clearly. And, um, and just, you know, obviously the project itself, you know, something that's exciting or something that you can get excited about or pushes your work into a new territory. Um, that's an important thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, he- healthy budgets always helps, you know, <laughs> they can be the worst, not maybe not the worst client in the world, but if, if they've got a big budget, then it's a little easier to, to deal with it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, some of the, the best projects I've had, I would say, are ones where 
you know, I had freedom to kind of explore what I wanted to. Um, and, but they were still able to provide me with enough guidance. You know, you, you still need a little bit of a box to work, work within. Um, you can't just be totally wide open to do whatever you want, but, um, yeah, it, I, it, it's hard to, it's hard to say, but those are, those are some of the things I would say make a good client. Um, and in terms of how to attract them, uh, you know, that, that's a little bit more of a, a difficult question to answer, but. Um, I, I guess another thing I didn't mention is just, you know, personality. There's, there's some, some people who just, you know, they match your personality and they kind of have the same attitude about things. Um, so I, I think that, you know, that's another, um, another thing that helps make a good client. And my business coach, Jonathan Sark, I talked about before, um, he, you know, he always says he doesn't do a project with somebody who he wouldn't go have dinner with. And I've kind of adopted that same policy where, um, you know, if I just don't feel good about the person or they don't seem like someone who I would you know, hang out with in real life or get along with, then um, they become less interesting as a client. And and that can help attract clients as well. I think when you put yourself out there and you, you know, show your face, show your personality um, and you're you know, sharing your both your work, but also kind of who you are, um, then then that will draw people similar to you in. And it's not always the best thing to work with people who are just like you, um, but but it can make for a more harmonious client relationship. It definitely certainly feels like it's, it's great to having some clients that you feel comfortable to work with and you are definitely enjoy the process to working with them. But what if you get a, a lot of good clients to want to work with? They are exciting projects coming up. How do you balance creating new 3D works and with marketing and promoting your existing work, because you know when you do marketing, you're getting more clients. You have more clients. You're working. So how do you balance this type of uh, issue? Yeah, I. I mean, so I really don't do a lot of marketing. I mean, I, I suppose you could call you know the LinkedIn posting I do marketing, uh, making YouTube videos is sort of marketing. Posting on Instagram, it, it's sort of all marketing. You know, getting back to what we were talking about initially, where it it all puts you out there, which is a form of marketing. Um, but, but I, I kind of just, you know, I'm, I'm in a fortunate place now where, you know, people are reaching out to me and I'm able to turn some work down. Um, but I, you know, it would probably be better if I made a more active um, or took a more active approach to finding those specific people that I like working with. But for now it, it's kind of like, you know, I, I take who comes to me and, um, there may be better clients out there, but, um, you know, through however you want to call the marketing strategy, they're finding me. Um, and that, and that gives me a, a decent pool of people who I've been happy to work with. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know how, what the, what the best way to, to, to be more intentional about bringing those people in would be. It's something I, I, I admit I need to work on. I think you're, Kind of surprised me that you're doing a bunch of different stuff that uh, you, do, I, on paper or on numbers, you are really winning the marketing per se. But as your person, when I talk to you, you feel like, well, you're just going with the flow. You're going with the feeling about the marketing. You're being natural, being real on the on the social media, on the on the internet. That's just come to very natural to you. It doesn't have to have a strategy written down. Or having a marketing group, people to teach you how to do this, or coaching, do you don't have to do this. But I can definitely see your personality actually attract a lot of views or attentions. That just feels like very natural talent, man. That's just how I feel it. <laughs> so next question would be your: How do you think you distinguish yourself from other three D artists in the field, and especially? I know you're the master or you're not really, really proficient in the blender and all your work is kind of built through that uh, software open source. A lot of people can really learn and do this. And uh, how, how can you communicate uniqueness to your potential clients? Yeah. So I, I think the first thing would be to sort of identify, you know, maybe what is unique about your work. Um, you know, it's not something that... I, it, it took me a long time to figure that out, you know, why people are hiring me and, and it can be difficult to start doing freelance and, and think about, um, what does make you unique because for a lot of people getting started, it's not necessarily unique. A lot of people can do the same things that you can do. 
Um, but in the same respect, there's a lot of clients who need the same type of work. So um, I think not necessarily focusing on, you know, being unique. Um, that, that's not something that it's not something I've ever really focused on is I, I'm not too worried about trying to differentiate myself from other artists. I think that a lot of the work that I do, um, you know, on, on occasion will follow trends and look like other work that's popular at the time. Um, but that's just kind of the, the cycle of it as well, where, you know, a client will see a project from one studio and then maybe that studio wasn't available or they didn't have the budget to do it with them again. So they'll find someone else. And, you know, it, it's sort of this replication of, of work. And, um, but I, I don't think that there's too much wrong with that because, you know, over time, there's, there's going to naturally be a uniqueness to your work and you will start to find a unique style. And that's something that eventually people will seek you out and hire you for. So I'd like to think that I'm getting to that point where, where people do recognize the difference with my work. But as far as starting off, I, I don't think that it's something that anyone should spend too much time focusing on trying to be too different. I think it's important to, you know, master the basic skills um, do what you can to replicate high level work and then start to put your own spin on it. Feels like you're, you're being very honest about talking about this topic. And uh, I feel like what you said is basically you don't create your style, but you are just doing in the re repeating patterns really consistently work and then you develop your own style. You probably don't even know what your start, style start start with, but eventually you will naturally come with a kind of style and people will preserve, preserve that. Well, that is Derek's style. Uh, I love to style. I want to work with him. So that is just becoming your own way. It's coming naturally instead of like really pick up something to trying to be different every single time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that can be exhausting to try to be different every time. Yes. I know you're coming to the marketing topic. You're not really kind of a strategy person to really put something in line and to do everything structured, but you came in with a kind of natural flow to having the big pictures, just trying to get more people to know you, what you do and do it well. Uh, do you know, or do you check any kind of your success on your marketing efforts? For example, do you look your, uh, analytics data on YouTube or Instagram to see how the feedback of your post or your tutorials. Do you do that? Do you track that? There, there's been times where, you know, I, I was really interested in the metrics. I think when I first started growing a following on Instagram in particular, I was, I was really tracking, you know, what days to post, which hashtags to use, how many hashtags to use, how many people like this post versus that post. Um, but I, I really, I feel like I only did that for a couple of months before it just was exhausting to me. And, and I, I didn't necessarily think that I was gaining anything from it. Um, so while I don't think you should completely ignore some of those insights that social media platforms provide and, and looking at the metrics there, it's not something that I personally have ever really focused too much on, but you know, the way I track my success is, you know, for one, am I able to pay my bills and my mortgage and put food on the table? Um, so that, that's really the bottom line is, you know, I, I just need to be surviving. And I think for a lot of people freelancing, that sort of is the metric at first is just, do I have enough money to survive? Um, but beyond that, I mean, the ways I would track if things are working well is, yeah, just to see, seeing what, you know, if I make a post on LinkedIn, how well did that do? Did that generate conversation? Um, you know, I'm not looking particularly at exact numbers or anything or, or tracking it, but you can, you can usually tell, you know, if you make two posts that one did better than the other. And, and it's hard not to think a little bit about why that might have happened, but I don't put it, I don't put a ton of effort into um, tracking any particular metrics, but um, I, I would say the other main one, and this kind of goes back to my website is just, you know, how many calls did people set up that week are, you know, through all those platforms, because getting 100 likes on an Instagram post or a, a LinkedIn post is is great. But if if none of that actually converts to a potential client, it doesn't really matter. So um, I, I would say that's the metric I track the most is how many how many leads are coming in and then 
not just how many, but how many quality leads are coming in. Because if I realize I'm, you know, maybe a lot of people are setting up calls, but they don't have the right budget or or they're trying to hire me for something I don't really want to do, then that does make me start to think, you know, what message am I putting out there? Um, so yeah, not a, not a very specific insight or metric that I'm tracking, but it's, it's definitely more of a, a feeling of, you know, where, where am I now? What did I put out? You know, are those things in line with kind of what my own goals are? Thanks for sharing that. I, I think that that is fantastic. And I know when you mentioned doing Behance or Instagram, it feels like you already get started doing these a long time ago. And I feel like you're being ahead of game already. And also in learning Blender when you were in high school and doing a really good job, there's another too a lot of attention on the Blender community. So do you see this 3D art and the marketing things are going to be uh, any trends you see now you wanted to get it onto that trend to still become the the leader to doing this type of thing ongoing because you already done it so we we're wondering like do you see the future or do, what do you think about this i mean i think the big biggest trend is just that 3d is getting bigger it's getting more popular um, our world has become increasingly digital um, as time has gone on, and I don't think that that's going to reverse anytime soon or ever. So, you know, I think that 3D is growing. So being a part of it any way you can is important. And, and that's one reason why I'm, I've become more passionate about the tutorials and just education in general around 3D, because I think that there are going to be a lot of jobs in the 3D space. So encouraging people to get into that. But it's also just something that brings me joy and I'm excited about it. So that's a reason to do it. Um, but as far as other trends in the 3D market, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think the, the biggest trend specific to 3D is just a, a greater adaption of utilizing 3D. I think more people are um, becoming interested in the, the flexibility that 3D provides um, in some cases over photography in particular. And that's very specific to what I'm doing, you know, product rendering. Um, but video games are getting more popular. Those are oftentimes 3D. Um, I mean, I mean, there's just there's an infinite range of applications of 3D. So I guess it, it's hard to put my finger on a specific trend or you know marketing strategy, something to work towards that would put you in a better place, but. I, I think if you're if you're watching this podcast and you've ever downloaded Blender, then I think that you are ahead of the curve, even if it feels like you're just getting started. You know, just getting started, just as the very first question that you answered, the first thing you need to do is just getting started. Don't overthink too much because I feel like a lot of creative at the beginning, they try to say, I need to have strategy. I need to be in a certain particular niche. Uh, I need to know how the things to do in order to start doing it. I, for my personal experience, I've been there. I have that mindset. I thought about it. I failed drastically because mm -hmm. that's a lot of hard work and I have not, there's no room for me to, to make a mistake. And then until I start just doing it, just, just, just getting things done, I slowly figure out what is my style, what is my niche and where suppose I'm going. So I think that getting started is the one thing that's really helped us uh, to get moving forward. And the last personal questions, I'm trying to make this thing a little bit fun and to let more viewers know you as a person rather than just a YouTuber. So last time you said you really enjoy eating out with your wife and to explore different restaurants. We wanted to know what is your favorite type of food? Oh, I don't know. It, it always depends on the day of the week, but uh, we, we both enjoy Italian food quite a bit. Um, and then I would say the other food that we get often that's a little bit more unique. Um, well, I, personally, I love Mexican food. So Mexican food, Italian food. And then uh, we get a lot of like halal food and like Mediterranean, like a shawarma. I guess that's sort of more Middle Eastern food. But um, yeah, th those are those are some some of the favorites. But but really, I, I like a lot of different food. I, I think we try to mix it up as often as possible. I mean, I enjoy, um, you know, sushi. My wife worked in sushi restaurants growing up. So that was kind of one thing we bonded over. I, I had actually never really eaten sushi much before I met her, but 
but she was, you know, very deep into the sushi restaurant culture. So we, we would always hang out at the sushi restaurant she worked at. Um, so yeah, sort of all over the place, but I guess if I had to say one personal favorite, it would be Mexican food. Mexican food. But uh, when you start talking about Italian food, I, my mind is just drifted away because I can imagine that your voice, your, your style, you can just kind of wiggling a, a bottle of red wine. Think about blender to tiro, man. Like that's just come to my mind. I feel very elegant. That Anyway, we just made a fight of you, but thank you so much for this episode. And uh, in this particular video podcast, we talk about solely focusing on the marketing. We were discussing a lot of questions about the pricing and how they're uh, doing pricing related to his business. So if you're interested to know more, we will release the episode in the next video and making sure you uh, subscribe and leave comments and let us know how you think about this one. And um, we're just going to temporarily say bye and we'll come back soon in the next video. Bye, guys.